Thank you, Mr. Lozo. Another question from the microphone. Thank you. My name is Elaine McDonald, and I live in Cornwall. And I ask my question as a member of the uh, Ontario Health Coalition, the Cornwall chapter. Yes. We know that the current health accord is due to expire in 2014. And in spite of the fact that uh, people say that health care is the big issue in this election, I haven't heard nearly enough. So I would ask you four candidates to please tell me specifically what your party's vision is for uh, health care and Medicare going forward. And if you specifically address rising drug costs, what they call catastrophic drug costs, and another growing sector of health care that is uh, developing very rapidly and I think needs some governmental oversight, and that is home care. So if you would tell me what your party's visions are on those points, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. And would you like anybody specific to start? No. Okay. Hands up. I started last time, so I can't hear. Fair enough. As far as I'm concerned, we got health care all wrong in this country. And it's time for the federal government to take a leading role in what goes on. Right now, if you're an RPN and you want to be an RN, you have to go back and start at the beginning. This is just ludicrous. You know what? If you've got an RPN that's been there for 10 years, she's probably better qualified than the RN that you got coming out of the university. What you need to do, you need to take your RNs nationally and have a standard nationally. You allow those RNs to train up to become nurse practitioners. You allow your RPNs to move up to become RNs and you let your PCWs move up. This allows, instead of training a doctor for five years and bringing it up, this, in one or two years, you're going to have nurse practitioners for every community. So you take a doctor with four or five nurse practitioners, guess what? Now we've got enough people to see that everybody is being treated. It's just that simple. We take money and we throw it away. In Cornwall, we, we basically have, uh, we had two hospitals. We had the general, we had the hotel too. When they tried to put those two hospitals together, the nurses from the two hospitals did not know exactly what their responsibilities were. Because at one hospital, what an RPN would do, at the other hospital, an RN would need to be doing. We need national standards. We can't be wussy about things. We have to stand up and say, this is the way it has to be done. We have to change things. We give away money with no strings or no ties to it. The drug program. The, the drug companies are running this country. And it's time you got them on a short leash and said, you know what? If we, if we don't start seeing some progress from you people, we're going to start allowing generics coming in. I live with a nurse. And I live with a woman who's training to be a nurse. so much to leave for the question. Uh, since the beginning of this campaign, that along with job creation, that was my number one priority because knocking at the door, that was the number one priority in healthcare. People are concerned about the, uh, the care they're getting or they're not getting. Um, at the Cornwall uh, Community Hospital, uh, when you're waiting six to 12 hours before being, being taken care of, when the surgery has to be canceled, and the, um, there's something going wrong with the system, uh, as you know, the Canada Health uh, Act is um, what expired in 2014, and our plan for the NDP is to renegotiate this plan to include long-term care and home care. That's finally we need to get these two, uh, because what it does is um, it would free up the beds in the um, in the, uh, the beds that we don't have, and uh, why not having the um, a 27. Uh, a medical uh, office and a pharmacy 24-7. You know, these things we need, and we need more cohesion between the, um, the level of governments and how we implement those uh, tax, taxpayers' dollar in the place. And um, we plan also to, uh, over a period of 10 years, uh, to uh, train or to place 12, 1,200 new doctors and 6,500 uh, new nurses over, over six years. 
Um, we also plan to, Elaine is the load of this question, uh, in terms of uh, making medicine more affordable, and that's a big issue as well, and I hear that door to door. Um, we need to have using more bargaining power to pharmaceutical purchases and also through public administration uh, be, be more aggressive and getting the generic uh, uh, more you know more affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. There was mention earlier about um, about Mr. Martin balancing the budget, and uh, it was neglected. Uh, it wasn't mentioned by Mr. Burton in order to balance the budget. Carved twenty-five billion dollars out of our healthcare system. Twenty-five billion dollars. However, there's also forty-five billion dollars missing out of the UI fund. That's was part of how the balance uh, budget happened. So that yes, we have some real, real serious uh, challenges in healthcare. Uh, as a matter of fact, compared to that, since we formed government in 2006, the Harper government has put 33 percent increase, which amounts to 30 billion dollars additional into healthcare. The prime minister has also committed. We are committed to to increase the health care transfer payments 6% per year till 2014 and to begin negotiating for after that. 6% by the way is, a, is the, the, the floor of where we will, the increases will start. Health care, we have to find a better way to do health care. Preventive, we have to get into preventive med medicine because you know our health care costs are increasing exponentially have to figure out a way. For example, we have to encourage you to be healthier. That's why as soon as this budget is balanced, we want to give you an incentive to join the gym to, to, to look after your own health and that way save the health care tons of money. Uh, the drug costs, I'm uh, home care, we've had some problems with health care, home care and drug costs because they're provincial responsibility and we're responsible for the transfer payments. But for once you have a government now that realizes how important health care is to you and the transfer payments are we're reacting accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lozo and Ms. Clement. The Harper government has focused on health care in the last few years. Health care isn't just about funneling money to the provinces. We really, as a Canadian government, have a role to play around a vision for health care. We need to protect health care and enhance health care. And the Liberal government has a history of bringing that care to health care. It was under a minority government in the 60s that our health care system came into being. We need to make sure, and Bob Ray was in town today to talk about this, that we have a first minister's meeting within a few months of taking office so that we all, as all provincial leaders, talk about health care in a national way. We have national health care institutions that can help us to design best practices. We also have to come at health care from a health promotion and prevention point of view as well. It's important that we take a look at things before they happen, that we talk about salt and fat and labeling on, on products. We also want to put a national food policy at the center of health care. Food is important as medicine. What we eat and knowing what we eat, knowing what's in our food is important. Knowing where our food is grown, buying local brings us closer and, and in a more safe way to our food source. So all of those elements are form part of healthcare, including catastrophic drug costs. So Bob Ray was talking about fondly about the Trillium Plan when he was uh, in office and talking about how that was important. Since then, the cost of drugs has increased and we need to ensure consistency and affordability. So a national health vision for health care is important and the Canadian government has a role to play there, not just funneling money to provinces. Thank you.